everyone, it's Sarah. <laughs> Welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to crochet my new pattern release, and I call it the Handle This Jar Cozy. And the reason I called it that is I added a little handle to the side, and we've also got some fun cross stitches in here. And this jar cozy is specifically made for when you put a cold drink inside and it starts to sweat and the cotton will absorb it, but also you've got this handle so that you can hang on to it. And another really neat thing about this cozy is although it fits the 16 ounce jar, it will also fit a 12 ounce soda can. I put that paper on there because I didn't want to endorse any of the soda companies. <laughs> Lots of different waters and drinks come in the 12 ounce soda can. And so this fits perfect for that. And it's a great thing to have in the summertime if you're going to have a barbecue or get together. Whether you're having drinks in a jar or you're serving cans, these are really fun to use. Make one for every person that's coming and they can take it home as a reminder of what a great time they had at your party. Now this is a free crochet pattern on my blog and you can find that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. To make one of these handle this jar cozies, <laughs> you're gonna need some cotton yarn. You can make this with a worsted weight number four acrylic yarn or a cotton poly blend if you want to. It'll work just fine, but I really prefer 100% cotton yarn. And the reason I say that is because if you're putting a cold drink in it or you're using it as a can cozy that might sweat, the cotton will absorb that moisture. But you don't have to make them out of cotton. This will work fine with an acrylic like I said, or even some of your cotton blends. We're going to be stitching today with our H hook. And our H hook is a 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle for weaving in your ends. And of course, you'll need your scissors. You'll also need either 16 ounce jars or 12 ounce cans of soda. To begin, we're going to start with our slip knot, and then we're going to chain five chains. We'll join this chain five into a circle by putting the tail over our hook and pulling it through that loop, and then snugging that down and tying that little stay knot. If you would prefer to use the magic circle, you certainly can. I just prefer this method for myself. We'll go in that chain five, pull up a loop, and chain three. This chain three will count as our first double crochet. We're going to double crochet 12 more double crochets around this chain five loop. We're going to be stitching over our tail of yarn, and I'll show you why when we finish this first row. Yarn over. Go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, and go through the second two. All right, so our chain three counts is our first one. Here's our second one. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve and thirteen. Our chain three counted as our first. And then we stitch 12 more for 13 double crochets. We're going to join 
to the top of that chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. Now, the reason that we stitched over that extra tail of yarn that we began with is we're just going to pull that tightly and it's going to close that hole. And then we'll come back with our needle and weave this in a little bit later. All right, so there's row one. For row two, our chain three counts is our first double crochet. We're going to stitch another double crochet right in that same stitch as our chain three. And then we're going to stitch two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. On row one, we had 13 double crochets. So for row two, we're going to have 26. So two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. I've stitched two double crochets in each double crochet around. I'm going to join to the top of my chain three with a slip stitch. And I'm just going to chain one. For row three, we're going to place one single crochet in each of the double crochets around. one single crochet in each double crochet around, and then we'll join back to our first single crochet. I completed that row of single crochets, and we're going to join to the first single crochet. Make sure you join to the single crochet, not the chain one, or you'll accidentally add an extra stitch and you need to have 26 single crochets. And we're going to chain three. Now we're going to take this and turn it out because this is the outside of our cozy and we're gonna work up the side of it. All right, so for row four, we're just gonna place one double crochet in each of those single crochets. So, one double crochet in each of those single crochets all the way around, and then we'll join back to our chain three. Here we go, a little bit of a split. Now, the reason we join to the first single crochet is because the chain one did not count as a stitch, but on the double crochet row, our chain three counts as our first double crochet, just in case you were wondering why it works that way. And you still wanna make sure you have 26 stitches because we're not going to be adding or subtracting any more stitches in our count. So all the rows working up the side of our can cozy or our jar cozy, <laughs> We'll have 26 stitches. I've completed that row of double crochets, and now our next row is going to be what we call a cross stitch row. So I joined to the top of my chain three, and then I chained three. And the way we do the cross stitch or cross back stitch is we yarn over. We're going to go to the cross back across that chain and go to the stitch behind and working from behind like that 
stitch a double crochet. All right, so now that makes it cross because we're going to come back over here. We're going to skip the next stitch and stitch a double crochet in that stitch. And then we're going to stitch a double crochet crossing back, going from behind, and stitch a double crochet in that stitch that we skipped. And you can see it forms these nice little crosses or cross stitch. So skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next, yarn over and then cross back and stitch that double crochet in the stitch that was skipped. Now at the beginning here, the reason we did it this way is when we come back around, we're going to be joining <clears throat> to the chain here that we started with, but we still want to have that cross there. And I'll show you that when we get around there. All right, so skip, stitch a double crochet, then stitch a double crochet, crossing back to that stitch we just skipped. See how that looks? Isn't that pretty? Skip, stitch a double crochet, then come from behind the, t the two loops and stitch a double crochet in that skipped stitch. We'll continue this the rest of the way around and then I'll show you how to join. I've completed this row of cross stitches. Here's my last one. And now we're going to join. And so you're going to want to join on the chain back here, not the cross that we did after we did, we did our chain three and then we cross back. Don't join there. Join in the top of that chain three. with your slip stitch and then chain three because if you join in this cross you're going to be off and it's not going to have a little cross there like we want to have all the way around all right now for row six we're just going to place one double crochet in each double crochet around and when you've done a little bit of a stitch like this it can be a little bit confusing where to put your stitches and so if you look at the top, you can follow that braid or it's just two loops, but it looks like a braid to me. Um, you can follow that around. All right. So our next stitch will go here. We're stitching one double crochet in each of the stitches around. Okay. So I'm looking at the top. I'm going to go to the next stitch here. In here and another thing to remember is you still have 26 stitches on this row because you're still we still stitch 26 double crochets we just twisted them or crossed them and so now on row 6 you're still going to have 26 double crochets. I'm going to continue to place one double crochet and each double crochet around and then I'll join to the top 
of my chain 3. I've completed this row of double crochets all the way around. I joined to the top of my chain three and chained three. And for the next two rows, we're just going to repeat what we just did. One double crochet in each of the double crochets around. Then we'll join to the top of the chain three and chain three and repeat. So we're going to repeat for two more rows, just two more rows of plain old double crochet. I've completed these three rows of double crochet and now we're going to repeat what we did down here for the cross stitches. I've chained three, I'm going to cross back and stitch a double crochet. I'm going to skip the next stitch and stitch a double crochet in the next and then cross back to that one we skipped and stitch a double crochet. Then we'll repeat that all the way around like we did on row five. Skip the next, double crochet in the next, and then cross back and double crochet in that stitch that we skipped. And again, we'll repeat this all the way around and join back to that chain three. I completed that cross stitch row. Now I'm going to join to that chain three with a slip stitch and chain one. Now for the last two rows of the top of our cozy or cozy, we're going to stitch one single crochet in each single or in each stitch around. And again, we want to follow that braid on the top so we know where to put our stitches. On this row, I do suggest just to make it fit better that you tighten up your tension just a little bit and try to stitch those single crochets just a little bit tighter. And it'll bring that cross stitch row in a little bit and it'll also make the top of your cozy a little bit snugger for the jar or can. So I'm just stitching a row of single crochet around. I'm going to join to my first single crochet and then I'm going to repeat stitching another row of single crochet. So I have two rows of single crochet around the top of my cozy. I stitch those two rows of single crochet around the top of my cozy. I joined to my first single crochet and chained one. Now we're going to make the handle. And what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet in the next eight single crochets.
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to chain one and turn. All right, our chain one will not count as a stitch and we'll go right in that next single crochet and stitch one single crochet in each of those eight single crochets. chain one and turn. And this is how we'll form the handle. Chain one and turn. And what we're going to do is place one single crochet in each single crochet of those eight single crochets. And we're going to repeat this up through row 25, which is 12 more times, chain one and turn, repeat 12 more times up through row 25. I've completed my handle up through R25 and what we're going to do now, leave your yarn attached, we're going to lay it down and we're going to be stitching it into R3. And what you're going to do is line that up. And R3 is where we stitch those single crochets. So we'll go right in between that stitch and then through the first loop of our handle. We'll put the loop back on our hook, pull that through. All right, so there's our first stitch. And now we'll go in the next stitch. And if you put your hand inside, it makes it a little easier to find. We'll go in the next stitch. And then the next stitch of our handle. And stitch our single crochet. We'll go in the next stitch. Go in the next stitch and stitch a single crochet. And you'll have eight of these because we've got eight single crochets that we stitched on the handle. Whoops, got a little string there. Let's do that one again. Go through, go through the loop on the handle, stitch that single crochet. Okay, and this is how it should look. Your first stitch was that slip stitch where we pulled the loop over, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plus the slip stitch is eight. And now what we want to do is we want to make sure this is not going to come undone. So I'm going to go back in that same loop and I'm going to make sure I grab the end of that handle with my hook. Get it in there. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and tie that or cut that off and then we'll pull that through. I got a little extra string there. There we go. There's my loop. All right, let's try that again because I lost my loop. There we go. All right, so we're going to make one more and then pull. And the reason I do that little extra one is I want to make sure the edge of that handle is going to stay put. All right, then we'll take our needle. Thread that on. I've got my hand inside and I'm going to go right to the inside and I'm just going to flip this over. 
because I want that handle to be sturdy. And so I'm just going to make sure I stitch a bunch of stitches in here. Because I want that handle to stay put. I don't want to drop my glass of tea or whatever I've got in my jar or in my can. Have you ever dropped a can of soda and had it spray? Happened to me at the supermarket. <laughs> All right, so I've got that nice and snug and I'll clip that off. And there is my cozy with a handle for your hand. So here's the finished one I did on the can and here's the brown one I did earlier on the jar. And so you can use the same pattern for a jar cozy or a can cozy. It works. Now you'll never spill your cold drinks again at a party because you'll have a handle 